Okay, what I've got here is a representation. We're using Constructor. I'll have this file available for you to use. But this is a representation of what's outside the PLC and what's inside. You've got three line ladders here. Okay? The outside line ladder, here's your contacts right here, your terminal screws on the outside of the PLC for your inputs. Here are the terminal screws right here for your outputs. And if you look just inside here, you'll see a little relay. So if I connect up my switches to it, what the switches are doing are energizing and de-energizing relays. Each relay has an unlimited number of normally open, normally closed contacts associated with it. Everybody with me so far on that? Yeah. Okay. Now, over here the same thing. I have some relay contacts that are connected to terminal screws on the output. And then you connect up your output devices, your lights, your starter coils, whatever. But everything inside the PLC runs through relays. Okay? If I look up here at the top up there, I've got start one. Okay? And if I'm going to, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to zoom in on that for you guys. So you see start one. What kind of contact is this? Normally open push button. And then I'll, over here I have labeled stop one. What kind of a push button is that? Normally, normally open. Okay? So I have two push buttons, both of them normally open. One of them uses, is used for a start function and the other one is used for a stop function. Okay? Now if I push the start button, you can see I start one energizing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If I push the stop button, you see the coil I stop one energizing. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Now, if these coils are energizing, that must mean their corresponding contacts within the PLC program are opening or closing. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's come over here to the PLC program. This first rung right here. Now, you see I've got a normally closed contact for I stop one. Right? But what was controlling it over here? A normally open push button. Okay? So when that I'm going to go a little wider on this so we can get everything in here. Okay? Now, outside here, in order to open those contacts, I have to push this button, energize that coil, those contacts will open. In order to close those contacts, I have to push that button, energize that coil, those contacts will close. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. Okay. You're going through a relay to control relays. So you have to keep track of what's happening here. So I am going to push and hold the start button. And you see the contacts on I start one are closed. Yeah. Right? Now I'm going to let go of this. De-energize. Those open. But when those were all closed, the power flow allowed me to energize that one coil there. Motor one run. Holding contacts for motor one run. This is an internal coil. Q1. It's connected up to Q1. You see the contacts for motor one run right here? I think I need to move over there on the camera so you can see that. I come over here on the output. Now, you've got motor one run contacts closed, right? That means my output is energized and that output starter is on. Okay? Now, if I look over here, my overload contacts are closed, right? Now, if I read down, look down there at my overload contacts, you come down there to the input there. Let's go down here and take a look at that input. What do you have there on IOL? 
We've got normally open contacts. So when overload trips, those contacts close, energize that coil, and they will in turn open those overload contacts up there. Okay? Open those overload contacts. You guys getting a feeling for this? Yeah. Okay? So when you lay this out, when you define your problem and connect up your hardware, this is the hardware definition that goes on. What kind of switch is connected up to, to input one? What kind of switch is connected up to input two? All right? Yeah. And then you go on down the way here and work the same thing with three, four. And then what do you have connected up on your outputs? You'll be writing the program. Oh, okay? Sure. Now, when you write the program, these coils along here are not shown in the, in the program. They are assumed to be there, but you don't see them. Okay? Whenever you define those inputs, you're defining a coil. But you don't see them anywhere. Okay? If you need help sheets like this, then draw up your entire environment. What you have connected to the outside of the PLC, and put the PLC as a blank box in the middle. That way you keep track of what's connected to the outside world. You have these coils in your PLC program, but you don't show those contacts. <coughs> okay? These are electrical contacts. They're not shown in your program. These are electrical coils. They're not shown in your program. All of this in the middle, the PLC program, is software. That is what is shown. How do you know on the outputs whether the contacts are normal or normal closed? Depends on what type, how, you're, how it's configured. Okay? It depends on how the PLC itself is configured. You'll have an output true or an output false. Okay? An output true is normally open, an output false is uh, normally closed. That's all programming? That's part of programming? That part is what she's talking about is what you buy. Okay? And in um, case of all of your relays, all of your relay, your relay outputs you have, you guys all have normally open outputs. So you have to turn it on in order to make those contacts close. So it's okay? just a hardware thing? Just a That's a hardware, hardware thing. thing. You can buy DC output cards that have normal outputs or inverted outputs. Yeah. Okay? The block, it's like what we have in there. Right. The block is this, what I put together here, what I put together here is exactly what you guys will be connecting up. Okay? So when you go and connect this up, okay? When you go and connect this all up to make it work, you're going to have two normally open push buttons that's redefinable, two normally closed push buttons that are redefinable, a selector switch, okay? You've got a normally open overload, and then you have two normally closed limit switches. Okay? How you want to represent those is up to you. If you find a good deal on toggle switches, had one student go in and build their entire PLC out of 112, 110 volt toggle switches. You know the light switches? Yeah. Yeah, so he come, came with a big, big board, a whole bunch of light switches out there to do the whole thing. Okay? He had to keep track of, is the switch on or off? Okay? Not like a push button. Push button, you push it, it closes or opens, depending on what type it is, you let go of it, and it changes state. Same thing with the limit switches. The overload can be a toggle switch. The HOA can be a toggle switch. Push button, push button, push, push, toggle, toggle, push, push. Or if you want to get actual limit switches. Now in your outputs, over here, you've got, instead of coils and everything, all you do is put lights, okay? You put a red light, yellow light, green light, blue light, white light, okay? You put those on there and that'll match the uh, Christmas tree you've got here in the lab. 
or you can just go get yourself a bunch of all red LEDs. And I think you have six outputs, so you can put a sixth one on there and use that as an indicator also. Okay. You only need to put lights. You don't have to go crazy and get motors and everything else and starter coils and everything. For right now, all you need to do is put lights. Your PLCs have lights on them themselves. Okay? And uh, the PLCs have lights so that you, if you really want to hold off, you don't even need to go and put lights on there. You can use the lights on your PLC. Okay? Now this program that I have up here is your lab number two. That is your answer for lab number two right there. That's the whole thing. But you're, you can go and copy that, put it down, it'll work fine. It'll work fine for lab number two. But you have to understand this. This is what you have to understand. You have to, in, rung, in this first rung here, we're starting and stopping this controller with normally open switches. In this next rung down here, we're starting and stopping the controller with normally closed switches. So I'm throwing you a little curveball. Okay? You go through here, you understand this, and hopefully everything will be a little work out. So look over here and you see for the first rung you've got two normally open, then you've got two normally closed. 